All right, Chuck Dizzle back at it. The homie's here. Another fire conversation about to go down live at Direct Man. Airplane James, good to see you, man. What's up, man? Man, uh, the last time I seen you, uh, you were working on, I think, Eastside Special 2. It was out. It was out, right? Mm -hmm. So you doubled up, put two different projects out right now. Definitely. I, and we'll, we'll get into a tweet that I saw a little earlier about, well, we'll get into that, you know what I'm saying, about new music. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but you got uh, Still Hurt. Mm -hmm. All right, out right now. Yes, sir. Low key hurt drop before that. Mm -hmm. Is this all based on real life things that happened in your life, or is this entertainment? Like, what? What is? Uh, talk about the, the both of those albums first and foremost for the people that may not have pressed play. But then, what? 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 Are, what are we getting with these two albums? Um, I think coming off of a uh, East Side Special two, um, I just think it was time to. Dig a little deeper, you know, with Eastside, my Eastside special series. Um, it's kind of like documenting what I saw growing up in my area, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into who I, who am I yeah. when I go inside the house? Got you. The lights are off. What do playing go through? Mm -hmm. So, um, Thinking about that, I wanted to make some deeper records, you know. Is about, it this was a decision that you made consciously, or was it were you also getting feedback from fans or from different people, you know, wanting to kind of feel, feel who you know Airplane James is or the the person? Um, it it was mostly me, and then the label and just put my producer TC. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get somewhere else, you know, dig yeah. it, dig it more than what's on the surface. Was that you know? was that the initial whatever the, wherever that the conversation was 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 that a an easy process to kind of go through, digging deep, figuring out stories, or talking about real life, or did it take some time to kind of like get to that, or was it like, oh no, I kind of know where to kind of scratch the surface to get the the, the material? Um, it took some time. Mm -hmm. It took some time for sure. It was just like, you know, because like you can do shit like, like I just related to basketball. Like niggas are good, but then you got LeBron. You know, <laughs> LeBron's gonna put a million dollars into his body and ensure mm -hmm. he's doing his shit. So, like I was doing songs like East Side Special, you got honey bands, shit mm -hmm. like that. It's just by the way, I played that at my baby shower. That shit went up. Hey. So, shout out to DJ DZ. <laughs> that shit went my up. My nigga. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I could do shit like that. It don't take no real effort or time. Effort yeah. or time, you know. But if you really want to work out and be in the pros and push the boundaries and get outside of that, then dig deeper. You got to so get uncomfortable. That, exactly. So it was just like, man, what do you go through? What's some uncomfortable topics that you normally wouldn't share? Yeah. And how can you make that a song? Yeah, yeah. So that's how Loki Hurt and Still Hurt came about. I think you did a good job at that, man. Um, and I don't know. I, I think you did a good job at that, but it also is like, Dude, that you have to get in a vulnerable space mm -hmm. to talk about some of that, some of those, you know, some of those topics, you know, especially love and getting hurt and you know, just going through all these things. Um, when 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 songs like that come about, is it a conversation that you have with said person or anything like that, or is it, are you the type of person that just records, put the music out, and then give people the heads up, or do you say, hey, look, we going I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of get into some shit relationship wise, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Nah, I just put the shit out. <laughs> and let really. them react after. But, you know, I, I record at the crib. You know, I got my setup at the crib. So, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, my girl, she's not really into none of this shit, really. Uh. Like, she's total civilian, you know? So sometimes, like, she'll listen to a song or after I play it or something, she'll be like, mm -hmm. what you talking right, about? Right, you know what right. I'm saying? And, you know, then we'll, maybe we'll have a conversation or not, but she respects my artistry, and she knows that's the way I express myself. So. Got it, got it. Yeah. Now, I'm never giving nobody heads up. The shoe fit, wear that motherfucker. That's hilarious. I, so you've never gotten, have you have you gotten a call about a record? And if so, how do you deal with those calls that may come? And, and it could be with anything, with any type of record, like them, either somebody feels like, oh, this is directed at me or mm. this is our story? Like, do, do, do those calls come through or have you received something like that? I received, like, some shit about, like, yeah, I have, but I don't even want to talk about that shit. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like family shit. Like, got it, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Leave that shit it's on. not that deep. Right, got you. Um, now, the one thing that I do, I paid attention to, and I saw you talking to, shout out to the homegirl, uh, Whitney and Bobby. You talked to them on their live about, um, I really love what they're doing. I love what they're doing too. Just amazing. If you guys check them out for for those that, that are listening or watching, 
Uh, they do an Instagram live on Monday nights talking about marketing, branding. It's just, a, it's amazing. I love that they're doing their platform. Mm -hmm. But you were talking about the artwork mm -hmm. and, and how you kind of develop that and how you pay attention to that specifically. Why is that such a, an important component to your brand and when you actually put projects out? Um, I feel like it's like, it's what reels people in, you mm -hmm. know? And I just, for me, like, when I look at Speaker Box, Love Below, I wanted to listen to the shit as a kid just based off the artwork. artwork yeah. 50 Cent, I'm like, damn. You mm -hmm. know, I believed all that shit. Like, right. the, the little, uh, the bullet. You know, right. I'm not even knowing the process of how it goes. I'm like, damn, did somebody really shoot, shoot the shoot window? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, I always just... shot for real. <laughs> you feel me? But, and then you open it, or the G-Unit album, you open it, and it's the G-Unit chain. Mm -hmm. Like, I've just always been into the art. And I'm like, man, the art has to match the music. Now, talk about the Still Hurt art and, and walk us through the process. And, and for those that haven't seen it, Describe mm. what it is and how you came to get that together. Um, so I attended this uh set gala uh put on by Shampton 16. 16. Yeah, salute. Um, salute. Um, but I, my braider fucking flaked on me last minute. I don't know if you go through that with having long hair. No, she thank like, God. He like, he like, man, man mine's just a real Blitz, one. Blitz. Shout out to Bliss. She on point with my shit. I be on the move <laughs> and shit. So. She flaked on wait, me. Wait, time out. Wait, do you hit? Do you? Here's the thing. Do you hit her at the last minute trying to get braided though? Like, yo, can you fit me in at five? No, I'm not one of those. Okay, I'm about to say, I'll for I sure a two, a two, two, two day, days, three okay. days. Give the forty eight hour heads up. Yeah, but she flaked on she you. She flaked on me, so I I needed something to wear to the set gala, man. I had to make a statement. And last minute, I thought about some rollers, man. I put them <laughs> motherfuckers in my head, and I didn't know nobody like to even do rollers. My granny friend put them shits in my head. Boy, that shit hurt. That's she hilarious. from the seventies, like sixties, like that shit hurt. Put them in my head. I went to the set gala. Everybody was like fucking with it. And then from that point on, I, I went to this little after party with my manager Millie, and everybody was just coming up to me like, "Damn, bro, this is dope." I think somebody from Reebok was like, "Man, I think we should do like a little campaign with you." This shit didn't go through, but hey, that's the light bulb right there. You already know, like, damn, it's sticking out like that. So then. Me and my manager from that point on was like, man, we got to do something with the rollers. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't want to commit to it. But then once the music, like some of the music we we was already finishing, it sounded like vinyl worthy. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I had to get a credit to my manager because he was like, man, whatever we do, it's got to look. We got to be able to put it on the vinyl. Yeah, yeah. So then he started sending me references like all the old dudes, how they would lay Lionel Richie, Teddy Pendergrass, Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah the lay is important. You feel me? So. We ended up doing this shit. We ended, I ended up putting it right. Man, I called him on the way to the hair appointment. Like, man, I think I'm going to just get my shit braided. After he's like, point, yeah. he's like, nah. No, I'm talking about the day oh, of the photo oh, shoot. Oh, so you about to, everything that y'all worked for, you was like, nah, I'm just going. I'm just going to do braids on the cover. You wasn't ready to commit. I wasn't ready to commit. <laughs> so, But it was like, no, nah, I'm telling you, bro, this is going to be a statement. So put the rollers in my head, did the photo shoot, and I was, I was geeked. Damn, dude. And it, it ended up working out because, I mean, a lot of people, are, obviously, that's one of the, the 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 pieces that people talk about obviously, yeah. to this day. Mm -hmm. um, it, it It's a, something, it's a the, the texture to it is warm. I don't know how to really describe it because I'm not a visual person like that, but I feel like you really hit the mark with it and, and, and did what you needed to do with it. Um, but the fact that you paid attention to it was was open to the idea and made it work out. It's, it's amazing. Um now, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of components to this album, man. A lot of people that I heard on there, Hurt Cobain, shout out to homie Fives, man. Yeah, shout out my guy Fives, man. When when you put this together and, and kind of putting these you know these pieces together, mm -hmm. what was the what was the concept of like making sure that the radio, you know, having having the voice there and just kind of like tying those pieces together? Man, it just it's a blessing to have a team because mm -hmm. you know. I, like I said, I think my biggest my biggest talent too is just being open to what everybody else has to bring to the table and being mm -hmm. able to pass the rock. So um, I was ready to go. That that process was grueling for Still Hurt. It took really? a couple months to. So by the time we got to mixing and stuff, You're I was done. ready to just throw it out. I, no, I was ready to just put it out. Yeah, you know? I'm saying throw it out. Like, yeah, like out you know what I'm saying. So um, those all those components were last minute components. Really? And I got to give it to, to Millie. He's manager, but he, he does so oh, no, much yeah, more. Millie, Millie's a full fade. You know, so he's like, no, we need this. Mm. We need this. I'm like, yeah, we make it happen. Then I was like, wait a minute. He <laughs> said, yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll, we'll figure it out. I know Foz. So yeah. I hit Foz. He came to the studio. 
he nailed that shit in one take. And it's like I, all this shit, I'm super geeked after. Yeah. But in the I'm, moment, I'm you low key like, like the annoying kid yeah. though. Like in the process, I'm like, man, come on, bro. I'm not, you know, it was like during the summer, I'm ready to come right back out. Yeah, I feel like I'm not, you know, low key hurt did what it did, but I'm ready to keep it, keep going, keep, keep yeah. going, keep yeah. going. They're like, nah, we gotta really bake this. Mm-hmm. Like you, you did the music, so you know what I'm saying, make everything else just as good. Yeah, take your time with the process. Yeah. Um, so do you think that this was the hardest one to kind of work on? For sure. Really? But, I mean, it was good. It was a good process, but, you know, it was also grueling, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, this was the most, like, most thought out, most work, like, that we put in. Yeah. You know, rec- that was my first time recutting records. Usually I just put the records out, like, you know, straight from the crib. I, I like to record at home. Yeah. Never touch them. I mean, we obviously mix them and yeah, master yeah. them, but I never had nobody say, do that again. Hit you with you the Dr. Dre. Like, you can do you that better. Me? On yeah. the real. I never yeah. had nobody do that. So, and I'm like, I don't need a fucking recut. <laughs> He's like, man. How many times does it take for, for Airplane James to say, okay, I'll listen? Like, somebody tells you the first time, hey, you got to recut that. Is it the second time, the third time, or do you get it? It the depends. Fir- <laughs> it really depends. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm stubborn a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But it don't take long, though. Mm-hmm. But if it's something I'm standing on, we might have to have a real argument a or something. You know what I'm it. saying? Like the what I'm into record, for instance, mm-hmm. right? I had another record in place of that. They call me, like, hey man. And we're in the fifth hour, by the way. We gotta turn it in probably like the next day. They're like, hey man, so I think this song goes better on the next project. I'm like, absolutely not. No. <laughs> see y'all I, at the studio. I'm standing on I said, this. see y'all at the studio later. Click. <laughs> Get out. I didn't see niggas till at, to the studio, and then wait, wait, wait. once we got to the studio, it was like, bruh, during we we finished all that she was supposed to finish. It was like, man, we well, can you just try this one. Tried that one, and we ended up replacing the song that I was in love with. With what I'm into. Are you serious? so? Wait, you wanted the other record instead of what I'm what I'm into? Yes. Why? Okay, <laughs> let me ask you this. So you you sent the record before we, I played it on live and direct. Mm-hmm. Was that before or after? That was after. So that was after they decided, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to use this song. Mm-hmm. You send it, and that motherfucker rang off, though, bro. It did, and that's one of people's favorites. Let me, okay. It wasn't my favorite, though. Really? <laughs> Is it, does that surprise you that people gravitate towards records that you're not that's what necessarily they say. fond of? That's what they say, man. You got to pick the artist's record that they That hate. don't like. <laughs> impress me. All of, like, impre- I didn't really. You didn't I, like impress I, me? I, I was joking with impress me. Bro, are you kidding me? What about 100 Bands? Please tell me. Okay, no, no, 100 Bands. Okay, I'm about to say that. I, I knew what that was. I, you feel me? I was in my bag on that one. Got it, okay. I was popping that shit. I'm about I to say, it. if you was going to say that on the outside, we, we just going to have to have people choose your records, bro. Yeah. Damn. All right, so what about Take It Easy? Damn. That was another record that somebody else picked. <laughs> Plain. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this because when I when I when I press play like, when I heard what you said right what I'm into love that one right mm-hmm. I like take it easy over what I'm into that's one of my favorite songs and I was so surprised really yeah I think we all was like the I think the team was of the it's, response except, of take it easy yeah it's but to me I'm gonna tell you why from from my perspective because low key hurt it sounded like you were just in your feelings the whole time, mm-hmm. right? Which is nothing wrong. I think that's the direction you were going with. With this, I kind of felt like that was one of those records, like, yeah, I'm hurt, but fuck that. I'm out of my back. Like, Take it easy. easy. It's like you talking your shit. It's like yeah. I can kind of root, you know, root along. Like, all right, we got something. It's some. meant to be that way, City too. boys up. You know what I'm saying? City boys up a thousand percent. <laughs> Damn. And you didn't want that one on there either? I, I, I did. Like, I I do all the records. I'm, I don't think I make a bad record. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, but you have other songs that you feel like would be better than that. I don't know if it's better. I just be like, you know, I be in a different mode. You know, I really like my sappy shit. I ain't gonna lie. I, I mean, mean I, I, I like it too. But I think you, it's good to to give people variety of what you can provide, like what you can bring to the table. I think it's dope to show people that. I mean, you can still get your sappy shit off, right? right. You can still have that on there. But it's like, yo, get. Get the people one, you know what I'm saying? Give give them one to just right. let that shit off, man. Yeah, Bruh, Okay, you you about to <laughs> let me <laughs> ask you? Okay, easy. hold on, hold on, Bruh, Okay, so okay, the, what I okay, what I want to know about what about say less? I pick say less. Okay, Jesus, about to say it. Okay, <laughs> we, 
Oh, shout out we to We all uh, picked the records. No, I know, but I'm just saying, when I'm talking about push, pushing back. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, like, 100% knowing that I want this on here. Because you, you said that you didn't necessarily want it. You, you want, didn't want it on the project. You wanted it to be something else, right? Yeah, initially, yeah. But you had, you, you was, it was some resistance. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, got a shout out to the homegirl uh, Tyler Kimani. She, she was on the end of uh, Take It Easy as well. Yes. That's and that's what I appreciate that. And maybe because you know I'm tapped into the homies and shit. But I like the fact that you're and you've probably you probably do this all the time. But it was more recognizable this time, like tying those elements in from people from the city around. Mm-hmm. You know, saying they're doing their thing as well. So shout out to Tyler as well. Shout out to Tyler. Shout out to Irgasmic. Irgasmic. She's yeah. doing her thing, man. She's always supporting me. So anytime I can support or you know shine a light on her, I'm gonna do that mm-hmm. for sure. Um, you say on, on I forgot what song it was. You said I'm a long way from Granny's couch, though. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it kind of made me think about one of our first interviews when we did it back at on Market Street, mm-hmm. and you were talking about you know how your your Granny gave you the name mm-hmm. Airplane James, right? Uh, or Airplane? Yeah. What 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 are the thoughts of family now at, at seeing your career from that moment to now? Like because everybody. There, there's a certain level of like confidence with somebody that's stepping into the music business, right? Mm-hmm. They may not think that things are gonna work out. They, 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 they love you, mm-hmm. but they don't know where it's gonna go. But as you're progressing, what's the family's reaction now? Um, is it still, is it still kind of like, boy, what you doing, or is it like, okay, we see it now? I think like yeah, like my people. They really see it, you know what I'm saying? Because they bring it to me now, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, I heard your song on the radio. But my granny is super, like, (laughs) she don't give a fuck about it. Like, you know, she's she's, the most she ever gave me, and I love her to this day, House Party. That when she mm. heard my song, like she she ain't see the movie or anything, but, but she, she they told her that my song is in the movie. Yeah, she called me like, oh, you're doing big things now, you know? Like, <laughs> my boy that's, made it. Yeah, yeah that's that's the most I'm gonna get from her. But I appreciate that. Yeah, but I'm just saying that that it's dope that you have that moment. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For like, sure. it's it's something that they can attach it. And talk about the connection with with House Party and being able to be in that. I, Again, that's a shout to Cal Matic. That was just another like super. You the lick. superstar. I hey man, I got I, said, I got my okay. Oscar worthy. You know what I'm saying? Performance in there. But man, I felt like a L.A. movie. Like bruh. he had everybody in there, bro. Like that's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, man. Get get your people on for sure. But but talk about the process when 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 you found out mm-hmm. that the song was gonna be in there. You know what I'm saying? Just having that look. Man, that was a crazy process. Like um, I'm how even. I always knew about Kyle Maddox, mm-hmm. obviously, but um, he had reached out to me um, after the East Side Special 2 rollout. I had did a pop-up at Louisiana. I had sold some of the merch. Um, but Millie, he, he know everybody in the damn city. Yep. He had the shirt on. Uh, Kyle Maddox saw him with the shirt. I was like, bro, I need that. Like, who is that? You know, he, he sent them to me. Kyle Maddox DM'd me. And then I met him at Simply Wholesome. Gave him the T-shirt. T-shirt. It was my last T-shirt, too. It was my personal so were you okay? Were I gave you, him my personal. You gave him the personal. I didn't even shirt. get to wear it yet. Get the fuck out of here! I'm dead ass. But it paid off, bro. <laughs> Talk about that when you see when you see. I it. was just so geeked that he even you know wanted to rock it, so I gave it to him, and then he told me um, he was like he'll be tapping in after mm-hmm. the summer or whatever. But I didn't know what that meant. But shit, he had hit me up randomly on Instagram like uh, my people gonna be hitting you about house party. Get the fuck out of here. I was like, oh, shit. You know, I was I was like, that all that shit happened at once. House party, boom, then Beano FaceTime, like, you want to come on tour? Oh, boom, like, bro, that yeah. week. Yeah, it was just lit. Boy, you couldn't tell <laughs> <Right>. me shit. <laughs> what? So when when you get these phone calls, when you get these looks, I because what I want to talk about too, and you know, kind of like my our, our platform with, with homegrown, but I I really like tying in the stories of people that go through shit. Mm-hmm. You know, and and are able to kind of like, I, I feel like what's dope about our relationship is people see you progressing in real time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They can go back from the first interview. They can see the interview that we did here, mm-hmm. and they, you know the interview now. And and life has just been progressing for you. Your career is going up. You know what I'm saying? That the music is getting better. But when you don't have when when those times are rough for you, like trying to get through shit, is that one of those moments? It's like, damn, those setbacks are. And we'll talk about some some things that may you set set you back. But damn, it's worth it. Like mm-hmm. all the bullshit that I go through. I think you had a line about being. I'll I, I read in a second about uh, patience. But 
all those things that you had those setbacks and those bad moments, these moments are worth it. When when Granny hits you and say, I'm proud of you. You when mm-hmm. when when you get the movie look, when you see Cal Medic, LeBron James with your shit, right? Like Yeah. At those moments, does that do you do you kind of like lock into that and hold on to that for the next down phase that you're gonna have? Man, that's a good question. I, I really just try to stay even keel. I don't try to get too too low on the lows, mm-hmm. too highs on the highs. Um Yeah. I, I just stay even keel. Like I don't really feel like I have super down times, but like when those type of moments happen for me, mm-hmm. I just make sure I'm present in them. I stay present in them. Got it. Got it. It's important though. I, th- yeah. I think I think that's one of those things because again, I guess you, you you're fortunate in the sense of not having those like super down times. But the thing is, bro, you're somebody's looking at you and like, damn, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. I want to be where he's at. I want to I want to have my 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 song in a movie. Like, yeah, I want to have my song on the radio. Like, I want to have these relationships. So. I think a lot of times we we have our highlights, which are cool, mm-hmm. but we never talk about the struggle. We never really like really like not to dwell on it, right. but just to show people like, yo, no, shit wasn't always sweet, but I picked myself up out of this, and now this is where I'm at. So right. as you stay present in those moments, like I think I think it's important that you you speak on it more because you're an example for people. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So just 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 one thing to kind of take and and use yourself as an example because somebody's looking at you was like. Yo, I want to do that, man. So what, for you, what, what are those next things that, that you're looking towards and saying, like, okay, I got to knock this off the bucket list? Um, I want to sell out some in L.A. Like, is you know, that's on that's top of my list right now. Gotcha. I want to really, you know. Do you have I had a specific a venue in mind? Is, is there something <laughs> that, you like, that you're thinking about? Like, yo, I got to get that motherfucker. Like, I've um, been in there as yeah. an opener. I've been in there with with other people's shit, but I want to. Which one is that? What venue is it? Roxy. Roxy. It's like legendary. It's like I don't care. I, obviously, I want to do arenas and shit, but mm-hmm. I got to do the Roxy first. I got to pack it out. I got to bring the special guests out. That's that's top on my list right now. Like when I started twenty twenty three, I'm like by the end of twenty twenty three, you got you got to do that. I got to do that. It's po- I think it's possible. For sure. Yeah. They ought to re- they the city fucks out. with you playing, for real. Like, the I city fuck with you. Come on, I know this. I All know right, this. this now. Like, I know this. Like, I know they're tapped in. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, talk about the record, record cover-up. Cover-up. That was a record. That's one of, like, that's one of my favorite records, actually. Um, produced by TC, mm-hmm. Dungeon Music. Ooh. I just wanted to showcase my writing ability on there. It's not about nothing or nobody in particular. Okay, I was about to ask you. Nah. So you've never seen, you never dealt with somebody and seen a name I, on them? Absolutely not. All right, you better not. <laughs> <laughs> you better not, mother. Absolutely not. But, you know, I thought it would be a dope concept, you know. Mm-hmm. As an artist, I like doing thought-provoking shit. I know it's a lot of people out there that have For sure. dealt with that shit. So I'm like, man, let me do something relatable. hmm and that's how it came about. So let's 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 see how 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 petty playing can be, right? This is this is this super is it's not you, right? Mm-hmm. But it's you. If you're dealing with somebody that has a name, right? They have their ex's name on them, they've tatted on them, mm-hmm. and you tell them to cover it up. How long do you give them to cover the tat up before you call it quits? Are you like I'm done with you? Damn. Or or is it is it a deal breaker? You you meet you meet somebody, you feel oh she got the X tatted on her, she got another dude, another dude's name tatted on her. Do you continue to talk to her? Or is it a rap from jump? It's not a rap. So I that don't mean nothing to me. So she can keep the name tatted on her. I don't care. You're not tripping. I'm not tripping. So she can have another dude's name tatted on her, and you're not tripping. I'm not tripping. That it don't mean much to me. I don't know. That's just me, though. I I wouldn't care. Would you ask her to to cover it up for real, though? Mm, I don't know. Probably like if I fell in love, I probably yeah. No, I'm not. Ta- no, 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 no. Okay, we we because we going in phases, right? Just getting to know somebody. That's mm-hmm. one thing. But you all right? You now you, you and your I'm yourself. fully committed. I'm in love and shit. Like you know, this is look. You just meet somebody. You see the tat. All right, you like just, all right. That's cool. I, I get that part of not necessarily like 
It's not, it's not bothering you. But now you a couple months in, about a year and some change now, you get you getting feelings. Do you I'm then? A Pisces. I didn't got feelings probably in the first month or so. Ain't gonna hold you. And so, and you're saying that a, a another name being tatted on somebody that you got feelings for, you're not tripping off of that. Yeah, I'm probably tripping. <laughs> of course, you're tripping. I'm probably tripping. How long do you give her to change it? Mm, when I fall in love, you got to change it. Oh, but when you I'm said you I... fall in love in a month. So whenever that, whenever the time you fall in love, that she has to change it. Yes. And how long do you give her before if she says, "Nah, I'm not doing it." If she says, "Nah, she's not doing it," it's an issue. <laughs> what? What if she? Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I got you, but you know, some other shit keeps coming up. Now we two, three months in, or and then shit, I'm gonna be coming up with my shit, <laughs> and I'm gonna be gone. That's what's gonna happen. No, I'm sitting. I'm sitting here when I'm listening to the album. I'm like. I wonder, like, if this is shit he's going through, like, for real, for real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I put truth in all my music. Bullshit, like, you, you know? said it ain't about you, so. Okay, yeah. so the whole song isn't about me, but the Camaro line is, you know. But give, like, give people the Camaro line. The, the, the splitting the money and. Yeah, you feel me? Like, shit, I've been there, shit. Tax season. <laughs> oh, okay. So the tax season, right? Yeah. How much of your refund did you give up? I want to tell you, it's ugly. Half? More than half. The whole bag? Yep. Plain. Yeah, man. It gets easy in the field. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, man. But she doesn't treat me equal. She don't at all. At all. God damn. She watched this interview. She's huh? sick now. Damn. City Boy's up a thousand. Boy. <laughs> that part. All right. There's a, a another line. Oh, damn. What was it? I just had it. It was another line you got um, that I appreciate the emphasis that you say on this line. You said, <laughs> bring that to a, like it's catered. Like it's catered. I immediately thought I'm of. I'm that shit for Hip Boy. Hip Boy stopped the record like right there. He was like, that's how I be feeling. <laughs> Like, how did you just express that like that? That's really how I be feeling. Bring that pussy to a nigga like this catered. I I love it. I love the way the emphasis on that line. You know what I picture? You know that uh, Shaq meme when he's a um, he's like a singing Shaq. I don't know if you've seen this, the Mm-mm. singing Shaq meme, but I always think of that. Hold on. There's a funny ass Shaq meme going on right now with fucking Kareem. That this, shit was hilarious. This one. Now you know I'm blind. I can't see. Oh that goddamn play. But the catered part, I think of it. <laughs> catered! Like, I just think of the emphasis right there on that line. Um, oh, damn, oh, that's oh, all good. Oh. Is what it is. Um, oh, man, okay. So I love that line. Yeah, it's a fire line. I like, now, the, the emphasis kind of brings it out more. But I do want to talk about, you, you did tweet out something about new music. New music. I, you said some new music is on the way. Damn, I said that? I think you said, I think you said uh, uh, did you say March? I said that? I don't know, did you? I don't think y'all saw me tweet that. You sure? When can we get some new Airplane James? Or, I or, just dropped, listen, motherfuckers. You know that's gonna ha- that happens all the time. When, yeah. Hold on. Let me, let me read something. Yeah, quick. I don't think I tweeted that. Let me let me see. Oh, my bad. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. I am working on some shit, though. I know you're working on some shit. That's what I'm getting to. That's crazy. Yeah, I ain't saying nothing about no March, though. You know what? I don't, I'd never do this. I never do this. I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone. I never do this. <laughs> you try to bring my tweet up? Man, n- <laughs> never do this. This. No, nah, but yeah, I am working on some new shit. I'm working on the third installment, man. Uh, you know, the hurt, the hurt series. Do we got a name yet? Yes, we do. You just don't want to say it. Yeah, I, okay. we got a name. Got it. Got it. It's done too. I just gotta. We actually finna leave here tonight and go. Fuck with it some more, mix it. They're gonna conv- it. they're gonna convince you to put some some records that you don't like on we it. Li- I'm not li- gonna say you don't like that. that. We're doing that right now. Like that 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 be the thing with us. They could be like, oh brother, here we go. Oh we could be solid on some. Sh- it's because I record. That's a good problem to have. Dude. Mm-hmm. You record almost every day. You got records that's interchangeable. You can yeah, you can work. with I that. do fifty records for a project, and then the goal is to get down to eight, yeah. ten records. 
I, I like that you do that too. That's easy. It's digestible for the fans, and it's, it's man. It's they a be good on my ride. head on yeah. Twitter, right? I'm like, bro, when he gonna give us a full project? No, I'm like, this is a full no, project, no. bitch. Yeah, yeah, they tripping. Don't don't listen to that. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna give them a full project, and they gonna do what I just just said. When's the next one coming? So keep feeding them the way you feed them. Mm-hmm. It's perfect this way. You're giving people, uh, especially the the way it is. Is it's not too much. It's enough. It's 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 good. It's like, digestible. Yeah. I, like, I know how I get in the car. Like, shit. I, I see a project or see an artist's name with 26 tracks. I'm like, I'm un- not listening. Not to doing, <laughs> please, not happening. Absolutely not. Um, it, w- w- What is the one thing that you learned about yourself getting through, I guess, this series? Now, since the other, the, the other tape is done, what have you learned about your creating process, uh, things that, you may have not done in the past that you do now or what what works and doesn't work that that you've learned over the the last uh couple of years mm. uh being open uh and not trying to be so in control of things when you're when you're trying to be super in control of things you're actually out of control mm. um so leaning on my teammates that's what I kind of learned in this process, like, and then just being more open and and telling your story, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, you said the Roxy, you, you're you're, that's the plan. The year the year can't end without you packing out the Roxy. Mm-hmm. Ah, damn, dude. I'm, yeah, that's gonna happen for sure. They already hollering, but you know, I want to wait till the end of the year. Make it right. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, man. Is there anything that you want the people to know that? We haven't kind of touched on as of right now. More music coming out. Um, y'all gonna see airplane all year. That's what I want y'all to know. I got about three projects dropping this year. Get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? Yeah. So is it gonna okay. Well, I guess my last question. Is it gonna be a new installment of something or is it gonna I be think- a continuation of what we've already heard? Minus Minus the hurts. We already know about that one. Y'all going to get an East Side Special again, for sure. Ooh. Okay. Because everybody been telling me they miss when I talk shit, so. That's what the East Side Special's for. That's what that's for. Okay, so you got the sappy shit for for, for the Hurt for, Series. For the Hurt Series. The East Side, East Side Special. Talking shit. Is, mm-hmm. is there anything outside of those lanes? I got some shit with Loda Gray. Oh. I got some shit with Dupree. I got tapes for both of them niggas, so. <laughs> I just be oh, working. That's amazing. Okay. Damn, getting it going. Me and Griff talked about some shit. We got enough t- records to drop a tape. Shout out to um, K. Franklin. K. Franklin, yes, that's that, my dog. That, that 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 track is amazing. Um, I was when I first looked, I was like, "Nigga got Kirk Franklin on this shit." Ah! I told and I told him when I saw <laughs> the record, I say the, less. I was like, "That would be crazy." How the fuck did, but nah, he, he's amazing. I, I think you guys got good chemistry. Shout out to Rose Gold as well. Um, who else am I missing? We got Griff. Jason Cash. Jason on there. Cash, yeah, that's right. Shout out to my Carson brother right there. Yes, sir. And then Griff Tyler. Yeah, amazing body of work, man. I'm, I'm, Thank you. I'm, I'm honestly, um, I love what you're doing. I, you, you're gonna always have a platform here, and anytime you want to have a conversation, you know, feel free to, to to holler and just keep keep working, bro. I'm proud of you, and just keep making your shit go, bro. Thank you, bro. Airplane it's James, a yes. Everywhere, follow him. Get all the get yes, get out. Sir. Where can they get the merch too? Um, Airplane James, Bit Cartel, or you can just hit the link in my bio. It's always up there. Um, follow me, Airplane James three five four. Instagram, Twitter, Airplane three five four. I ain't got nothing else. I ain't got no more social medias. I ain't got no Snapchat. That's the devil. Stay away from that. <laughs> Snapchat is the devil. Yes, sir. So you deleted your account? Definitely. <laughs> so I told you I was being a better <laughs> nigga this time. Oh man, there, there's more things we can touch on. I, I wanted to save it for the next conversation, man. Airplane James, thank you so much for coming on through. Yes, sir. All right, Chuck so Dizzle live and direct. Catch y'all next time.